Thanks very much, Richard, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm absolutely delighted to have this um, opportunity to speak to you today. Um, I'm certainly not going to do justice to the future, of, um, the future of, of payments and what technology is doing in 30 minutes, but more than happy to have follow-on conversations and show you a lot more stuff at the booth after the session. Before I speak, I generally have to give two caveats. Um, the people from MasterCard who've heard me speak will have heard this many times. First of all, I have a thick Irish accent and I speak very fast, so I'll do my best to um, speak slow and speak as plainly as possible. And the second thing is, it's very, very easy to talk about innovation. You know, innovation, it's probably the hottest word in the world right now. Every single company is talking about how innovative they are. It's very, very easy to talk about. It's very easy to take, talk about taking risks, trying things, looking at the future from a fresh perspective. What I'm going to try to do today is not just talk about innovation, but show you some of the many innovations that we've created within, um, within MasterCard. So. Just, 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 just to kick off, um, I, I, I think His Excellency Dr. Ali talked about the fact that you know the, the, the future is going to be is going to be immense and, and technology is going to change things greatly. But the reality is the future is already here. Technology is allowing you to do fantastic things with commerce that I'm going to show you. But it's going to be amazing what happens over the next five to 10, 15 years. And in fact, in the lab, and we've got labs all over the world, we actually often challenge ourselves to look at what should we be looking at now because we need to ensure that the things that we look at are going to create fantastic experiences for our customers, for our businesses, but we also want to ensure that they have longevity. There's no point looking at technologies that are going to be a fad. You want to ensure that the types of solutions that you invest time in are going to make people's lives um, so much better. Oops, oops, overclicked. So, we look at this slide here, and you know, we, we, we all read the various different reports and what's happening with technology, what's happening with consumer trends. We've tried to distill it down into a small number of areas that we think are going to be most relevant from a commerce perspective over the next 10 or 15 years. I'm not going to go into them all, but many of them you will be familiar with. The first one is um, the reimagining of the point of interaction. When you walk into a retailer today, there's already consolidation happening at the point of sale. So what, what are retailers looking to do? They're looking to create better experiences for customers, make the experience better, make you get better offers, maybe make you buy, make impulse purchases, allow you to order ahead, allow you to, um, allow you to check out in aisle. So the point of interaction is likely going to evolve to be potentially something like just a tablet. Now what happens if it's a tablet? That's going to allow you to do an awful lot more than you can do at the point of interaction today. Again, what I'm going to show you. Biometrics, biometrics are absolutely critical. Um, His Excellency talked about the things that you can do with fingerprints, retina, facial recognition, and we're doing a lot of work in that space. What I'm going to show you today is something that's a little bit different, but it is in the biometric space. I'm wearing a wristband, and this wristband actually uses my ECG, my electrocardiogram, or my heart rate, to authenticate me. So when I go to my car, when I go to my, my office, it will recognize me, it will open my car, it will open my office. When I walk to my PC, it will log me in without, me, without using a password. And when I go to make a commerce transaction, as I'm going to show you on my phone, it's not going to ask me for my password. It's actually going to authenticate me with my, EC, with my ECG. Another thing that we think about hugely in MasterCard is the Internet of Things. So we're all aware that MasterCard is trying to drive towards a cashless society or a world beyond cash. In MasterCard Labs, we're focused on a world beyond plastic. So we're already doing things like MasterPass, which is our digital acceptance mark, but we also recognize that sometimes using plastic isn't going to give you the optimum experience at that point in time. Sometimes your mobile phone isn't. You need to be able to connect, connect from whatever device is appropriate to you, and every device we believe in the future will be a commerce device. Every single connected device will allow you to facilitate transactions. Um, another key one is the emergence of the platform. I'm willing to guess that most people in the room today have a smartphone. So it's, maybe it's Apple, maybe it's Google, maybe it's Microsoft, maybe it's BlackBerry. But the reality is, if those companies had not opened up those phones as a platform, they would just be a nice phone. Nice phone that maybe takes pictures. But because they opened up the platform to the development community, it actually allows developers to build solutions on that. We build commerce solutions on it, but the reality is we all use the phone for different things. It could be that we're using it as a productivity tool, for email, as a sat nav, as a gaming platform. The reason you can do that is because the platform is, um, is open. 
we o we've opened up our network in a controlled way to allow developers to build commerce solutions um, on that. The final one I'm going to touch on in this slide before I get into some of the demonstrations is it's no longer about the payment. Payments are table stakes. As a company, we want to continue to make payments safer, simpler, and smarter. But nobody wakes up in the morning going, God, I can't wait to pay. I'm really looking forward to going into the restaurant and paying for my breakfast, or I can't wait to pay for the cab ride. You know, payment is a necessary step that every business requires to succeed, but the reality is technology allows you to do so much more. Something like Uber. Uber's a great way to pay for a car, but really it's a fantastic way to get from point A to point B. So what we're doing is, and you'll see this throughout the demonstrations, is we look to use technology to provide value to the customer before, during, and after the, um, the transaction. So we've talked about the fact that technology is moving at a phenomenal rate. And if you look at MasterCard, we've been around for about 50 years almost. And we've been successful, in my mind, for four reasons. The quality of our products, our people, our processes, and our infrastructure. Now, if you look at our processes and our infrastructure, our processes are highly documented, they're highly analytical, they have appropriate segregation of duties. Our infrastructure is secure, scalable, reliable, fault tolerant. It's everything it needs to be to be able to process transactions securely in 210 countries, across 150 currencies, and supporting two billion cards. But the challenge is, needing that level of rigor, and we need that level of rigor in our core business, doesn't allow you to take risks. It doesn't allow you to try things. So what we did was we created MasterCard Labs, which is the division I run, and we have a sort of a mantra that we, we want to try things, um, take risks, and fail smart. And what failing smart means is that we want to look at the future from a fresh perspective, but if something is going to fail, we want to fail as fast as possible, we want to fail as cheaply as possible, and we want to learn as much from that failure as, um, as possible. So it's okay to fail, but you need to fail such that you, that you improve and build new solutions on, on top of that failure. So I don't want this to be a sort of a, a, a MasterCard sideshow, but, but I just want to set some context. We've created, since Labs, MasterCard Labs was created about three years ago, we've created about 300 different innovations in a variety of different, uh, different areas. E-commerce, um, next generation shopping experience, mobile as a point of sale, authentication, P2P. The list goes on and on and on. And, and I can show you many of these at the, um, at the booth. But the first one I'm going to show you now is a mobile payment innovation called Quicker. And Quicker has many, many guises, as I'm, as I'm going to show you. But the key thing is it sits on the MasterPass platform. And MasterPass is our digital acceptance mark, which you can use for checking out in-app, on a website, in a store, on, from your television. And Quicker was one of the first incarnations that we actually created. So hopefully, if the technology works, you should soon be able to see my, um, my phone. Can you get my phone up, please? No, wrong one. Other one? OK. OK. Can we get that resized, guys, please? So while we're waiting for that to be resized, you'll see an application there called Quicker. And Quicker allows me to make payments in a variety of different ways. I can scan a QR code, I can tap an NFC tag, or I can actually just make a purchase from, from nearby. So in this case here, um, I'm going to make a purchase from Ground Coffee. This is a real transaction. Ground Coffee is a real coffee shop in, um, in Dublin. So the first thing is I've started the application. Maybe I don't know where Ground Coffee is. I just see from the app it's near me. I can tap. I can see um, what time it's open from. I can get to the website. I can even get directions from inside the app. Again, it's not just about the payment. It's about the experience. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to order my breakfast. So I'm going to get a healthy muffin. And I'm going to get a, maybe I'll just get a pre-packed wrap. Add that to my cart. Again, focusing on what the user is trying to do. I'm trying to get my breakfast. A Coke Zero, an orange, feeling pretty hungry. And I'm going to get a 16-ounce latte, skinny, with a dash of hazelnut. So that's what my breakfast is. So I tap my basket. And you can see here I've got the option to pay with my prepaid card. My rewards are integrated. If I had a coupon with that merchant, that would be integrated. And I can see here what the order is. Now, if I tap my card, I've got two cards in my MasterPass wallet. So I can select to pay with my prepaid card or my MasterCard. I'll pay with my prepaid card, and I slide to pay. 
Now in this case, I have not configured this to work with my, with my wristband. I'll show you in a second that is. But I press my, pa my demo password, and I've just made the, um, the payment. So what happens then is the retailer sees the transaction. That was paid with my MasterCard, but MasterCard, MasterPass supports all brands. They get the notification on their pause system. They prepare my breakfast, and I get notified when it's, um, when it's, ready, to, um, when it's ready to go. Now, I also get my digital receipts. So I get a digital receipt there and then for what I had purchased. So typically, I use this every day. When I go into the office in the morning, I get my breakfast this way. And I'm, I'm a creature of habit. I typically order the same, um, the same thing. So I can tap the action button. I press buy again, slide to pay, and I've just ordered my breakfast again, thinking about what the consumer is, um, is trying to do. Now, one of the things is it's actually quite hard to get users to change behavior. So we were looking at how can we get users to change behavior in a way that made their lives easier and help them do something that they need to do. So we all got to feed our children. So we've actually launched this same experience in Australia with a lot of schools. So the experience today in the schools is you give your children cash. They walk into the, they walk into the school in the morning. They go to the cafeteria at lunchtime. They get their lunch and then they leave. It's generally a bit of a free-for-all. There's queue management. It's not a great experience. And the school doesn't know what they've got to, um, what they've got to um, prepare that day. So we've created this experience inside the application for parents. So I can pay my, for my school books, my school fees, donations, school trips. But in this case, it's a canteen. So in this demonstration, I happen to have two children. And I want to get for my daughter, Jane, child, I want to get um, her lunch on Wednesday. So you can see it's Australia with the Vegemite roll. I'm going to get cucumber sticks. I'm going to get corn on the cob. And then I'm going to pay. Now, what's fantastic about this from a consumer experience standpoint is, is that the parent didn't have to give the child cash. There was no danger of the child being bullied. There was no danger of the child losing the cash. There was no free for all in the cafeteria at lunchtime. The school knew at 9 a.m. that morning it had to make so many sandwiches, so many bottles of water. And when the child came in in the afternoon, there was a bag there, a brown paper bag with their name on it that they were able to walk out on. And from our perspective, we believe this alone will displace 100 million cash transactions in Australia next year. But the beauty from our perspective is that every single parent will now be able to use this experience when they go to a coffee shop, when they go to a stadium, when they go to the movies, because you're using the exact same experience that you used when you were buying your, um, your children's lunches. Now, it's not just for order ahead. So what I'm also going to show you, I'm just going to leave that up on the screen, and hopefully we'll be able to get my, um, my, my new point of sale up on the screen as well in a second. So I'm just going to log into the point of sale. So can we, can we get my iPad up on the screen, please, as well? And we can leave, if we can leave my phone there, just to show both sides of the transaction. No, I want to leave, I want to leave this, and I, I want to leave both. I want, to leave, I want to get both of these on the screen, please. Yeah, and the iPad, and that's the PC. OK, so what I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to show you the experience from when I walk, in, when I walk into the restaurant. Now, I've, I, I've, just, I've just checked in um, because I use Beacon technology. So when I walked into that store, again, I simulated that by logging into the tablet, it recognized using the Beacon technology that I've just checked in. Now, again, I have control. The user always has to have control. Um, and when I, when I go to make an order, so you can see there the, the order experience. So this is the point of sale system that the, the retailer has. This is also integrated with their existing point of sale systems. So I'm going to get, you know, just maybe a Hugo special and an espresso. We'll just do, that's it. And I press charge. And what it's going to do is you'll see my faces there. So I'm going to press my face and I'm going to press charge. Now on my phone, um, if we can actually get my phone back for one second. On my phone, it will actually ask me to slide to confirm. So confirm the purchase. So I'm just going to slide. 
confirmed the payment, and I've made the payment, and the retailer sees I paid with a MasterCard. I also get a digital receipt, so there's no paper involved, and that's just what I bought in that retailer. But let's say I left my phone in my pocket. So in this case, my phone is in my pocket, but I happen to be wearing a Pebble smartwatch, okay? So I'm, I'm walking into the store, you'll be able to see my phone, but if it was in my pocket, it would just be turned off, and the retailer's going to give me my breakfast. I press charge, I it taps my face, and what happens is my phone vibrates. Um, and again, I, I, won't, I was going to put this up on the screen, but just in the interest of um, expediency, I won't. But if you, if you want to see it, if you want to see it, um, please come visit me at the booth, the MasterCard booth. And on my screen, it says, accept the payment from Munchies, 10 euros 65. So I can actually accept it or reject it. In this case, I'm going to accept it. And what you will hopefully see is that I paid with my MasterCard. So I didn't even have to take my phone out of my pocket. So the user was able to control the transaction. Think about the experience. I walk in, I want to get a, 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 a can of Diet Coke and maybe a packet of chewing gum, tap my watch, walk out. It's still a card transaction, it's still secure, it's focused on the user. What's the user trying to do? The user's trying to have an efficient experience. Um, the next one I want to show is, um, if we can just get my phone up on its own, please. So in this case here, um, if we can actually resize this, it would be great. So in, in this case, um, Al's Pizza is a, is a restaurant. So Al's Pizza is a restaurant that um, typically, it, it, it's, it's a semi-fast food restaurant. I don't know if you have the equivalent of Wagamama, where I walk into the restaurant, I sit down, I order, um, the food gets delivered to the people at the table whenever it's ready and then you ask for the bill. Now the challenge in these types of, these types of retailers is that it typically takes 12 to 15 minutes from the time that you ask for the bill to the time that you get to leave the restaurant. That's not a good experience for the customer because you're waiting saying, you know, we need to get moving or you know, you're just sitting there. But it's definitely not a good experience for the business because that table is not generating revenue during that, um, that time. So this example is gonna show you the Nimi as well, the Nimi that I'm wearing. So I walk into the restaurant and I tap, and it gives me the opportunity to check in. This again is integrated with their existing system, and it gives me a code, and this code is given to the, is given to the server when the server comes to the table. We also have it integrated with Google Glass, like again, I can show you this at the stand, where the server actually sees, if the server's wearing Google Glass, they see who has checked in and what their code is. So when, when I go to pay, instead of saying, please can I pay my bill, I just tap my bill is ready, and it's going to show me that I had whatever, I had a number of pizzas. I'm going to press pay, and it's authenticating me with my Nimi that I'm wearing, Hopefully it will authenticate me. It's paying. And then I can actually get my receipt by just tapping view your receipt. And I walk out of the store. That again was a card transaction using MasterPass, but I didn't have to take the card out of my, um, out of my pocket. Okay. So now back to the, um, back to the presentation. Back to can we, can we just get my, um, can we get my iPad up on the screen, please? Just make it smaller. Okay, so an, another innovation that we've been working on, and again, you know, I can't show you the 300 of them here, is looking at the next generation, this will be fine on its own, um, just the e-commerce experience. So we were looking at what's the next generation of e-commerce experience going to look like? So typically a browser to me provides, a web browser, provides a decent experience. But it's, you know, I can, I can shop, I can do email, I can do social media, I can watch videos, I can check the weather, I can do a variety of things. But typically an app lets me do it so much um, better. So we were looking at technology, how could we enable consumers to buy from digital content without leave, buy physical goods from digital content without leaving that content. So a simple example, I'll show you some of the prototypes. Um, can we see that? Yeah. So in this example here, this is where it started. We had Kingdom Magazine. And Kingdom Magazine is just a regular magazine. This was the very first prototype that we created. I see the watch that I want to buy. I tap it. Goes, gets me some information about the watch. I tap. I can add it to my cart. I don't want the black one. I want the silver one. I press checkout. Brings me into my, um, into my MasterPass 
prototype experience in this instance. It says, do you want to pay now? I say yes. Gets me my payment details, my card, where I want to deliver it. I press finish, and it's done. Nice and simple. So we thought about that from a number of different experiences. And we thought about, what about video? So we then came up with, imagine I'm watching a baseball game or a soccer game, and I'm about to, I'm watching the Nationals against the Yankees. Think about the advertising experience. So I'm able to buy everything that he's wearing. I can buy his hat. I can buy his jersey, I can buy his PS3 game. You know, it's the exact same experience that I can buy from this. But just to show you the way that we think, so as this video moves on, you'll see some stadium advertising. And you'll see the stadium advertising for Al's Pizza again. I tap, and it lets me buy pizza directly from my, um, from my iPad. So we created that prototype in labs, and then we decided we wanted to move it forward into the market. So we were fortunate enough to partner with uh, with a, uh, with, with, with a company called Condé Nast, who are one of the biggest publishers in the world. They publish magazines like Vogue, Golf Digest, and Wired. So this is, this is the Wired example. So I'm reading Wired magazine, and I suddenly see a product that I like. So I'm just going to scroll through and find. So I like this laptop. I can tap the shop this icon. It gets me information about it in real time. Then I can add that to my cart. Now, the beauty here is I can actually leave this, go find a different product from a different merchant, add that to my cart, and have a single checkout experience from that merchant. So I put in my password. Press sign in. Place the order. And I've just bought directly from the digital content without actually leaving the digital content. So from an advertising perspective, this is a better form of advertising, but it's also fantastic from an, an editorial standpoint because as a digital publisher, whether that's video, whether that's print, whether it's whatever, you have the ability to, um, to monetize that and turn it into a better form of content. Now we also looked at doing this from a, um, from a physical magazine perspective. So if we, if we can get my other device up on the screen, that'd be great, thank you. Okay, so in this example here, I've got an application called InPrint. I'm gonna be reading, I'm gonna be reading this magazine and I'm going to start the in-print. Now on this, this happens to be an advertisement for um, a bottle of perfume. So I've been traveling a lot recently. I'm going to buy my wife a bottle of perfume. And it's suddenly going to start scanning the image, as you can see there. And it automatically recognized. There was no QR code. It used image recognition there to recognize the image. I can add that to my, um, I can check customer reviews. I can watch the product video. Again, a video about, the, about, about what I've just, I've just scanned. I can also check a slideshow if there's multiple pictures. But the key thing, I suppose, I want to add it to my cart. I can add it to the cart. Another example on the back, I'm just going to scan something else, is I'm going to scan um, Leonardo DiCaprio. It recognizes it's a watch. I'll also add that to the cart. I, use, I go to my cart. It offers me the chance to check out. I press check out. Again, it's MasterPass. The beauty of MasterPass is it is the single digital container or digital wallet that you use, whether you're buying from your phone, your PC, your television, your car. It doesn't actually matter. I press sign in. I then press, I can change where I want to get it delivered to. I can change which card I want to get delivered to a different house. I press order. My order has been processed. And I've just bought two products from the same magazine using my, um, using my digital, um, my digital um, device. Now, so if we, if we can get my um, phone back up on the screen. OK, great. OK, another thing that we think is very, very important is focusing on what the stakeholder wants. And the stakeholder doesn't have to just be a consumer. It also, can we make this the right size? Thanks, guys. Um, it can also be a small business. So what do small businesses want to do? Small businesses like consumers are not waking up going, 
I'm really looking forward to accepting card payments. They're looking to grow their business. Very, very small businesses are saying, I want to accept electronic payments. As they go up the food chain, they learn more about you know, their the customers, they want to grow their customers, they want to increase loyalty, and as they get more sophisticated, they want to use their data to, to, drive, to, to, to drive insights. So it could be, do I want, where do I open a new store? Am I targeting the right demographics? And so on and so forth. So we've actually created a platform called Simplify Commerce. You can actually see it at simplify.com, the first incarnation. And its first incarnation is, how do I actually accept payments quickly? So as a customer, I can go to a site, as a small business, I can go to the site and I can register and become a merchant in a matter of minutes. Going forward, where this is going, this actually is an omni-channel experience. So as a small business, I can manage my customers, I can manage my inventory, but I can also accept and monitor payments across all of my different channels. That could be on the web, it could be um, from a, my mobile, it could be from inside an app, or it could also be from an e-invoice. So in this case here, I have an application called um, Simplify and I can see how my business has gone over the last month. Have the deposits come in? What were 20,000 deposits have come in? What were the payments? How many transactions? I can look at insights. I can actually make a new payment if I want to, and this actually supports chip and pin, so I can type in whatever the amount is, charge. If I had a chip and pin dongle, it would be a chip and pin transaction. Um, I can see what refunds have occurred. I can see when the deposits entered my bank account, because that's again something I care about. I can see what chargebacks occurred. But the one I'm going to show you today is just the, the invoicing. So let's say I'm the local plumber, and I come to the house to, to, charge, to charge you, to do a piece of work. I can pay with my card immediately, um, or I can, be, I can receive an invoice. So the plumber says to me, I want, to ch I want you to, to pay my invoice. I press create an invoice. This has a lot of sophistication. I can put in due dates, memos, I can add line items if there's multiple, multiple entries. But in simple terms, what do most plumbers want to do? They just want to get paid. So I'm going to select my customer. I happen to be sending this to myself so I can give the demonstration on stage. And I'm going to say it's for $145.85. I press send. It's literally that simple to use technology to send an invoice. So I'm the plumber, I've sent the invoice. What does the other side of that transaction look like? So I'm gonna go back into my email. So now I'm the, I'm the customer at this stage. And you can see already I've received an email. I see that it's for 145.85. And I can also see the plumber's logo if the plumber is there. This is as simple as to pay the invoice. I press view and pay invoice. Brings me into a secure site. Water. And again, I can see the, the, the plumber's logo. If there were line item details, I can see that. And I press pay invoice now. Now I can pay this one of two ways. I can pay this with my card, with my debit card, with my credit card. Or I can also, if I want to, I can pay with MasterPass because MasterPass is the foundation that we see for the digital future. We're laying down the rails to make the shopping experience simpler and also more secure going forward. So in this case, I'm going to use my credit card, put in my card details, 1215, and I've just paid the invoice. So it was that simple for me to pay the, um, the invoice, and then you'll see very, very quickly um, what, the, what the plumber sees on his side. You can see this invoice has been paid, been paid. Let's say, for example, I overcharged. I didn't want to charge him that much. I can go back in. I can see the payment. It's going to be there, 145. I want to refund it. Maybe I want to refund it all. Maybe I just want to refund maybe 45.85. And we just say overcharge. And I've refunded. Again, what we want to try to do is we want to use the advances in technology to create experiences that make it easier for both sides of the transaction. We want to connect buyers and sellers, but we want to make it easy for them to, um, to do that. You know, the, the, the key message is we had to evolve our business. We had to look at the future from a fresh perspective. And you know, if I'm lucky enough to be invited back here at some time in the future, hopefully there will be a lot more exciting stuff for um, for us to show you. Some of the stuff I've shown you, like for example, the, the device for authentication will be mainstream, I believe, or some form of it will be mainstream, but there will be lots and lots of evolution that we will be, um, that we will be working on. 
Love to speak more to you guys at the um, at the Mastercard stand during the day, and show you some of the um, some of the other things that we're um, that we're working on. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you.